beautiful listener to the Humanist Podcast with me, Hammer, and my good buddy, Steph. Hello, Steph. Hello there. And uh, we have a lot of juicy news today. And finally, we get to talk about anime. <laughs> yes. Mm. Oh, just mm. smell juicy. that human weeb. Yes. That weeb essence <laughs> that we conjured. Smell, smell, <laughs> smell that weed stank. Yeah. <laughs> that... <laughs> Sorry, that was weeb stank. That <laughs> supposed to be. Yeah, but we have a lot of um, interesting news today because it seems like like the, the. I mean, every game or a lot of series are getting adaptations. And Netflix uh, is really on that. Yeah, and I think that all the, they're all the better for it because they do create some of that good old hype. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, especially, like, me playing a lot of Dota 2, I was, like, mm. curious to see that they were going to make an adaptation of that, for, like, an anime. Yeah. Um, um, which is, like, yeah, I mean, the Dota 2 lore realm is mm -hmm. only partly explored. I've been delving into some <laughs> rather obscure YouTube channels that kind of <laughs> infer a lot, and... <laughs> There's yes, the a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I actually did enjoy my time with those uh, videos because it fleshes out the the because it's already quite rich with character, you know. Yeah. All of the all of the heroes are very fleshed out with a lot of unique lines and unique interactions even. Mm. You know, when special heroes kill each other, uh they have like comments and stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and some of those comments come to mind when I'm talking about it right now. But yeah, it's actually quite good. I feel that that is like a sprinkling, a seasoning on top of the cherry cake here. Yeah. Uh, but the deep lore is kind of missing. You know, it's only kind of referred to in comments that the heroes throw out here and there. Would you say that, because um, I know jack shit about Dota, like, um, like nothing, jack squat. Yeah. Uh, but the, so like, I guess it, they, they took kind of the Dark Souls approach in storytelling when it comes to like, um, you know, they, they kind of made the characters, they made the, you know, the whole, they made a game, but then they kind of just like made mm -hmm. the story um, as yeah. they moved along yeah. afterwards based on what they have at the game. Yeah, it's like when Valve acquired Dota or whatever, you know, with that whole debacle with, uh, like, Blizzard kind of claiming that pro IP as their property. And, yeah, there was, like, a whole process there. Yeah. But the thing was that it was a mod for Warcraft 3. Right. And... Um, all credit to the people who made Dota, which was... Uh, I can't remember, Ice Frog or something and some other people. Mm -hmm. uh, but they um, they made a very compelling map, basically, or mod or whatever you want to call it. It's not really a mod. It's using the the world creator uh, yeah. in that game. But they kind of fleshed it out over time because they did so many iterations of it, you know, updating yeah. it and updating it, adding new heroes. And a lot of the... the the flair, I guess, was added in descriptions of the items. Yeah, right. Uh, and when Valve uh, ad adapted their Dota 2 version, uh, they kind of fleshed out the characters more. You know, all the characters are basically just used, uh, you know, the sounds and stuff are from Warcraft 3. Right. But you can, what's kind of funny is you can actually see that, the the, the kind of old inspiration from that unit that was picked to be the hero yeah. uh, still in Dota 2, you know, and, and a little bit in their character as well, which is basically just random because they had to, like, pick a model and a sound sound set for, for that hero, you know? Yeah. But then, like, over time, it's been more and more fleshed out, and then when uh, Valve took over, they really did a, a massive job on a kind of, uh, you know pinning down the personalities and the like small tidbits around the heroes so they yeah. would feel very unique 
uh, which was, uh, I, I think they did an amazing job with that. And it's kind of ongoing even, so they still add like small tidbits here and there. Mm -mm. But the lore consists mainly of what, you, like you said, kind of the Dark Souls lore in items, lore in, you know, like... Um, Luna always uh, like saying that uh, she's fighting for Salamene and you know it's like um, I mean bounty hunter always uh, being in service of the realm you know right, right. whatever that means he always like <laughs> kind of refers to that but no no one really knows what the realm is you know <laughs> you can kind of like let your fantasy fill in the blanks that's kind of my my take on it you know yeah so i guess um i guess this this anime is gonna be more <laughs> of a um, like first foray like proper foray into the world like outside of the confines of the game would you say yeah yeah i think you know, i think that's where they're where they're trying to go and it's gonna be interesting but it's also going to be maybe not hard but dota 2 is a very popular ip yeah and um i mean i'm excited to see what they're going to make of this because yeah the, it's kind of like warcrafty i guess yeah um it kind of resembles warcraft uh, the warcraft universe a little bit but also a little bit more diverse because of all the characters and all the small tidbits to make the characters unique yeah right and it's already like the the whole foundation is that there's gonna be in, a bunch of different wholly unique characters, rather than armies mm -hmm. and factions, I guess. But yeah. So so what what did you think of the trailer as a Dota fan? Well, it, I'm I'm excited, but I'm not like over the top hyped because you know <laughs> these types of adaptations can also not strike like a perfect note. Yeah, and I guess that depends on who you are and what you expect, of course. But uh, it centers around Dragon Knight, uh, yeah. which is like a main character here. Uh, he... I don't know if this he is like the Dragon Knight from Dodo, or he's just one Dragon Knight. But it yeah. seems like he's the Dragon Knight. But he's named though, like Davion or something. Mm -hmm. So I think that's uh, I can't really remember all the names because. <laughs> that's a unique thing with Warcraft 3 when when you name a hero or you have a hero yeah you can have uh the hero have uh randomized names which was a thing with Warcraft 3 yeah uh and like a paladin could have like uh, five different names when you spawned him in you know from the altar yeah and they to you know they needed a name for the heroes um so they just put in some names, you know, and those names have carried on. So I think maybe that's the name of the the proper name of of uh, Dragon Knight. Right. Um, I'm also curious, like, because the the I'm also let's say um, somewhere in between when it comes to the adaptation because mm -hmm. Netflix has made some banger adaptations. One one thing that comes to mind is like Castlevania. Yeah, I really absolutely. enjoyed that show. That show was great. Uh, all three seasons, even though there were some hiccups here and there. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. But but at the same still, time, that was good. Yeah, it was. And even season three, that kind of I while I didn't really care much for the Alucard plot, the way the way they fleshed out the side characters in mm -hmm. that one, the way they took them was really interesting. You know, like they did a lot of good stuff with that. And but then they also have Dragon's Dogma. Uh, which is a brilliant game. Uh, you should definitely check it out if you haven't. It's like for all, yeah. it's, it's a masterpiece, like a bit of an underground masterpiece, but still. Um, <laughs> yeah. But you know, they, they ruined that with 3D CG that made me just like yeah. barf oh, my yeah. eyes out uh, as soon as I saw it. So, yeah. Oh, oh, please stop with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No like, one likes that. Yeah. There, there's like what. I, I've seen maybe like two examples uh, where it works. One was B Stars yeah. that's currently going there. It fits. Um, 
but it's always gonna look a little bit of jank you know berserk was yeah. ruined by it like completely yeah, yeah. obliterated by it um but i mean you know. for me it's like you can you can have some cg just sure. tone it just tone it down you know yeah. the very complex large like whatever like a huge army or something from a distance moving you know that sure use cg to save some money and kind of make your job easier but don't overuse please just keep it like to to a minimal if you're gonna use it yeah like would yeah. you be? <laughs> i absolutely agree and um you know they're i guess they're getting better and uh, luckily from from the trailer at least that there didn't seem to be any in this and it's also worth noting that um, this one is made by Studio Mur, uh, which is a Korean studio. Yeah. And they are known for, um, they provided like a lot of animation services, it said, for Legends of Korra, the Avatar mm -hmm. show, uh, which had very good animation. And, yeah. but, but then again, there's actually no Japanese companies involved with the production of this. So then be, it, it, it mm. becomes part of that, like, is Avatar an anime? It, it becomes yeah, kind of yeah, sort of yeah. part of that, that, <laughs> that discussion. That right? whole debate, yeah. Yes, but yeah. whatever it is, it's it tries to be an anime, and it looks just as much anime as Castlevania, in my opinion, so... Eh. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it looked good on the trailer and stuff. I mean, yeah. I thought the animation was uh, absolutely decent. Like, maybe not the best I've ever seen, but... Sure. Like, no no complaints there. No real yeah. complaints. And, and also, it looked like they didn't skimp on the violence either which you know i no. i always appro uh, approve <laughs> and i mean for me it's like the lore expansion i think it's yeah. like the most appealing thing because they they basically have free reign they have a rigid scaffolding to to build from you know mm -hmm. uh but uh there's like very few details on this world that there's a lot of filling in to do so they can yeah yeah that's right but at least um valve is heavily involved with the production as well so i guess at least you know they won't do something outrageously um you know improper. Like weird yeah because i mean they have to be involved because there's so many <laughs> intricate relationships let me yeah. give you an example here dragon knight you know he can his ultimate move is to transform into a dragon mm-hmm uh, and he he has like some kind of dragon's blood or something. That's the name of the, the, the series. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but when he when he kills a true dragon hero, which is Jakiro, which he is a true dragon, a two headed dragon, mm -hmm. he kind of mentions or he says, only as a part time dragon, I bested you. Jakiro, <laughs> <laughs> which is like a, a nice nod, and I think the the old um, and Jakiro also like mentions Dragon Knight when he kills him, like being inferior and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> yeah, there's also uh, I think uh, is it Skywrath Mage, which is like a flying, vengeful bird uh, harpy like hero. Yeah. Uh, he. I think when he kills Dragon Knight, he he kind of says like, "How dare you spout wings when others more deserving have lost theirs?" Ah. Uh... <laughs> Which is also like a nice nod. You know, you can kind of feel the the backstories there, but you don't really know anything. You know. So yeah, that. And that, that sounds to me like something you can really leverage into something good if it's managed properly by someone who really knows the property. Well, in other words, yeah. Valve. So that's and good. let me tell you, like this game is littered with stuff like that. Yeah, I would imagine. So, yeah, so they they absolutely do have like the scaffold, like I'm talking about. You can mm. you can build on on that, but you can also easily make mistakes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, know, for sure. With that so. And I'm sure some need... like minor details and stuff can be can be kind of like overlooked, but overall it needs to really nail it. It can't make too many yeah. mistakes. Yeah, for sure. And I don't think that Dota two players really, uh, the majority of players don't really care about like nitty gritty details. It's not not like 40k fans or, or anything. <laughs> oh like <that>. boy! <laughs> Imagine we can have, like, <laughs> hour long discussions about <laughs> the, like 
things they feel that the author actually wrote wrong because that's not how the board game universe is you yeah. know you know what i'm just, saying just imagine actually... that fan fiction of the emperor having like a host of eldar like an, an eldar harem you know yeah that kind of stuff that would be but i mean like even minor details sometimes i've seen like the hardcore 40k fans yeah they kind of obsess or they disregard something as not canon even though it is technically canon you know because it's Ugh. not vibing with the whole the the picture as a whole as a whole i'm, I'm just <laughs> I'm, I'm just glad my neck beard isn't that developed i mean 40k fans they have some neck beards they <laughs> so, there there is a degree of of yeah they mm. develops into neck bush in the worst cases uh, good old neck bush yeah but yeah i'm i'm kind of excited for this series actually but it's not like I'm too overly excited either. I'll definitely watch all of it. I'm pretty sure because um, I've had more wins than you know fails when it comes to these kind of uh, adult animations, as they're called. Um, mm -hmm. Like both for anime and for um, these more Western anime. So, like for example, uh, Devil Man Crybaby, I thought was absolutely amazing. Mm. Oh, that was a good one. Yeah, that was a good one. But what's the story? I mean, that that was, of course, like a manga adaptation, f uh, the first series. Yeah. But what was like the second series, the Crybaby series? Was that an homage to the pre the first anime or what? Uh, it was just an adaptation, I think, just like um, uh, a remake, sort of. So yeah. because there's been been several iterations of Devilman, I've read the original manga, and Crybaby mm -hmm. is relatively close to that in terms of okay. like main story beats and with akira and and uh, lucifer and all that and mm -hmm. uh you know th this this manga this manga has been like you know tormenting parents <laughs> since the 70s you know and yeah. i'm just happy that i was actually surprised and a little bit um taken back by how little they toned down the violence in crybaby like you know uh, you, oh, you know yeah. that scene with, uh, I don't remember the, the Lucifer kid's name, but when he brings Akira to that underground club. Yeah. And yeah. he's just like, let me that... show you. And he just like fucking start, takes a piece of glass and just like starts slicing civilians. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Yeah, he just starts <laughs> butchering to, to kind of summon. But it's like, yeah, I, I love that series. It's so stylistic and yeah. so artsy, you know? It is. And like the spontaneous violence like that. You, you kind of feel the fabric of reality just kind of tearing a little bit because it's so unreal to start killing people like that yeah yeah <laughs> you know that, that's why it was oh. uh, that, that, that's why i was taken aback by it because it wasn't really like cool violence it was just like complete like psychotic <laughs> just rampaging and you know I would really imagine if you did that in the 40k universe, uh, the warp would open up and shit would yeah, happen. It's, yeah. It was it was that kind of like demented, That's a disturbing full party style. Yeah, uh, that yeah, it, children way of partying. It, it definitely <laughs> was. Uh, but Good yeah, times. I mean, uh, I mean that that anime was excellent. I I didn't have any kind of previous uh, expectation or anything to that and kind of came in blank and it was really really good and yeah. some animes do have that crazy artsy feel you know like that one yeah and um, have you ever seen what's it called angel's egg or uh, that? that's a movie i think i'm not sure there's something familiar about the name yeah yeah 1985 angel's like it that's really kind of out there you know freakish is it like one of those um you know those really like almost exploitation animes from from the 80s because like japan had no chill in the 80s with some of the <laughs> the, the, the animes they made yeah no i th don't think it's you know that violent but it's very uh, artsy let, let's just call it that it's directed <sighs> by the uh, mamoru Ushi. yeah uh and it's like uh, it's about this girl, and she's like carrying this egg around in a dystopian like wasteland future, right? 
and she needs like a soldier kind of character and he is basically he takes a little bit care of her uh but the like theme throughout is that she takes care of the egg uh you know but she doesn't really know what's inside the egg she just kind of hopes that it's some form of life or something right and like it it seems like all of a create or all of civilization is just gone for hundreds of years maybe or at least like decades yeah and it's a very like dystopian but also very very artsy and all oh, the style the animation is just so cool you know and it yeah it harkens harkens back to those 80s animes we are yeah the the crybaby right that style yeah yeah mm -hmm. like like the crybaby it resembles that one yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking yeah. at the the screenshots of it now, and it looks uh, it looks pretty interesting. I, I think I've only heard the name in passing. I, I've never actually checked this one out. So this yeah. one uh, might. Yeah. But it's, I mean, it's like it's very artsy and it's very deep. But mm -hmm. you can kind of argue that it can become a little bit tacky, or some people don't like that. That's um, you know when you leave a lot of things up to the viewer yeah. to conclude. You know. But I do really like those speculative uh, endings and like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, as a fan of uh, Lovecraftian horror, I'm all about mm -hmm. that stuff. I love that. Like, it, don't you see it though. Yeah, I, not, I will. It's not that. Um, but yeah, but uh, <laughs> where were we? <laughs> mm. Series adaptations, Netflix. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, just ex listing examples to to like um this like dota's merit um mm -hmm. you know speaking to its success um chances so but i guess you know from from what i can tell it looks it looks promising uh the blood of zeus one um is was also had some really interesting action scenes and some cool art going for it um mm -hmm. i'm getting similar vibes to this and it also kind of looks a bit like some of those uh, dc animated movies um which studio mer has also provided services for yeah like uh, death of superman and th they've also done uh batman soul of the dragon uh which i guess is coming up and then also mortal kombat legend scorpion's revenge so mm. you know they they've yeah. got they've got like the the chops with um you know violent I, I'm hesitant to call it a cartoon. Should we just call it an anime or animation? <laughs> what should we call it here? Yeah, just call it anime. Basically. Yeah, and I want to say Davion, especially in the um, the teaser trailer when he runs down uh, towards the dragon, and he has that helmet. Yeah, and his sword like it reminded me a lot of um, Berserk in the Berserk, Golden Age arc. Yeah, yeah the, the first armor that you see guts with when he's a mercenary. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. And he looks like Goofy Guts. If Guts had mm -hmm. like um, a little brother that was taken better care of by his parents, <laughs> you know, it was kind of like this guy. Yeah, I, I absolutely understand what you're saying. I mean, yeah, it gave me those vibes as well uh, when I saw the trailer. And I mean, that's good, isn't it? Yeah, it uh, is. He's a little bit goofy, but I think that Dragon Knight also is a little bit like that. You know, yeah. he's not as. Uh... <laughs> as absolutely tons of testosterone <laughs> yeah right he's a little bit more you know unsecure and he's trying to prove easy. himself i guess yeah he's trying to prove himself so he, he should he should leave the testosterone to his big brother guts Mm-hmm. right the uh, guts is definitely <laughs> taking the crown on that one exactly yeah but um but yeah i'll i'll watch this for sure I think it's um, a good that they actually put in some effort to making. It. I mean, that's what Netflix is good at, right? Because they they approve projects that otherwise, you know, other studios might be a little bit hesitant to. So, yeah, and that's laudable. I mean, I think that we we get a lot of some some kind of mixed things, but also a lot of good things because they take that risk. Yeah, know? I mean, just uh, The Witcher, the show, is also like a good example, right? Right, right. That's a perfect example mm, i mean sure it's not so, anim oh they're, they're actually making an animation um a witcher animation as well uh which oh if i'm not mistaken it's coming up it's called um 
The Witcher Nightmare of the Wolf, which is also made by Studio Mer. <laughs> yeah, so they they've made like like the deal of the century with the Netflix. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, and and the, the cool thing about this one is that um, Nightmare of the Wolf is gonna focus on Vesemir, Geralt's uh, teacher and mentor. Ah, oh. the old wolf. Yeah, that's, that's a very uh, interesting take. Yeah, because in the in the games you you hear tales of his glory days, right? Um, mm. Which is like what a hundred years ago or, or something, you know. Um, but uh, Vesemir is such a cozy mentor character, and I'm I'm looking. Uh, but then at the same time, he's also like one of the sh you know the most proficient duelists among the among the Witchers. Yeah. So I'm I'm looking a lot forward to that one, and um, mm -hmm. if they if they prove themselves with Dota, I'm gonna be like even more excited for Night of the Wolf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's something to look forward to. Uh, and like in other games adaptations, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we got some news about the Borderlands movie. Yeah. About the casting and stuff. The ca yeah. Uh, um, what do you think about this uh, this Borderlands adaptation stuff? I this one I'm pretty pretty cautious about. If if Dota, yeah. I've got a little Boston in there. Um, <laughs> the <laughs> the if Dota made me like let's say twenty percent cautious, this one is a uh, solid 50, 50, 50. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, it has some I, things that speaks for it, but it, mm -hmm. it also has like some things that made me question it a little bit. So the casting list is expanding, and um, you know you have some really heavy hitting names attached to it. So yeah, you it's have building. it is, and you have like Kate Blanchett. She's uh, mm. gonna be Lilith, if I'm not mistaken. She played Hela in in Thor Ragnarok. Um, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is gonna be Tannis, which I found mm -hmm. pretty cool. Um, Ariana Greenblatt as Tiny Tina. I think she she plays uh, young Gamora in Endgame and uh, Infinity War. So I mean, yeah. you don't yeah. you don't know yeah. much, but she looks the part, I guess. Jack Black is gonna be Claptrap. That's always uh, that's always a win. <laughs> I mean, Claptrap was always a meme. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. And Claptrap was a meme. <laughs> <laughs> and how he can uh, <laughs> and he can't ascend stairs. Yeah. Um, oh Jesus Christ! Yeah, so like so far so good, right? And then Florian Mont Montiano, I'm sure I butchered the name, is gonna play Krieg, and I don't know. Have you seen Creed, the Creed movies? No, no, I haven't. All right, so in in Creed two, he plays um, <laughs> Ivan Drago's son, like okay, Victor yeah. Drago, and he is such yeah. a fucking unit of a guy like he he, yeah. he looks like he's um you know he, he's in the scout corps about to become a full battle brother in the space marines like okay he, he's like i will break you yeah 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 exactly <laughs> like he he he's no slouch he is not making shame on his dad um mm. like i'll send you a quick picture of this guy because you have to oh, <laughs> your reaction <laughs> Um, the, the power yeah the presence exactly and um you know Cr he's gonna play krieg yeah and that, that's fitting I uh, guess. absolutely you put him in a mask shave his head he's krieg uh, it's just oh, it's just damn yeah this guy is uh he's built yeah i'm he's pretty sure built. he's not a natty he, he's uh no. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like i mean he's yeah he's very broad he's not like looking like a, a bodybuilder at all it's it looks uh, like a, a good lean massive physique if yeah. i can yeah if i can say that, that if that that's the, fits in a sentence he has insane genetics and the funny thing is he's like almost as tall as me so imagine that frame oh. on my height <laughs> yeah that's perfect though yeah so essentially he is uh up and coming uh Astartes. And mm -hmm, so that's mm -hmm. that's cool. That's a cool casting choice. And um, then you have the the biggest question mark I have for the casting here, yeah. which is Kevin Hart uh, as Roland. I yeah. I I just isn't he too short? I mean, 
I love him in comedic movies, right? But Roland is this kind of like over stoic, can't read the room kind of. But he's also pretty tall and and bulky. Um, but Kevin Hart is like tiny. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I do love Kevin Hart though. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's not like uh, I mean, I can't criticize him if, for the for that particular role, but oh. I like him as uh, <laughs> as. Um, as an actor but yeah like you said he doesn't really fit that typical feel that you got from the games yeah what do you what do you think of like this series being adapted as a movie like um, in general i well, i think there's potential there um yeah but they need to like really have fun with it and they need to emphasize all the crazy guns which i'm sure they will um oh, absolutely <laughs> but you know over the top violence it needs to be really zany really campy really like if they just go balls out and are not afraid to just like completely bring in the games um just craziness then i think yeah, sure yeah. uh why not right and but i think that like it's all about Eli Roth, was it? Where he's he's the director, here. yes. So. Yeah, and it's all about what, like, what does he envision? You know, what's kind of how zany is it going for? Is it yeah. gonna be like a full-on comedy or right? <sighs> what what what's gonna be like the contents here? Because I feel that the casting is so dependent on his vision. Yeah. And we can kind of see a little bit of, the, of that with Kevin Hart, I guess. As, right. Um, yeah. But, yeah, to me, I totally agree with you. I don't really see Kevin in that role. But yeah, still, I mean, Kevin is a really good actor. So he can, he can probably carry a lot, even though the casting may be a little bit off. Yeah, I'm sure he'll do a fine job. You know, it's just that I, I figured something like I it's kind of like with, um, um, you know, if if they're not going, if they're taking a little bit of artistic li uh, liberty with it, then it's fine. Right. But then I, I just think yeah. he's too short. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. <laughs> that, that's the main issue. Like, uh, but he can have like guy. plateau shoes or something. Yeah. And I, I guess <laughs> we'll make, like film tricks because he's like, what, 165 or something. He's really short. Right. So yeah, and yeah. Roland looks like he's towering over Lilith uh, in in the game. So I'm just like, hmm. yeah, uh, for sure. That's I'm, good. Yeah, but I mean, like like I said, if it's like a total comedy, super zany, weird kind of uh, approach they're going for here, then maybe Kevin Hart is the right man. Yeah, sure. And um, uh, kind of stretch him a bit with some <laughs> CG or something. Yeah, because he is like 163. Yeah, 163. Which is really short. <laughs> so, sorry, Kevin. Um, but, like, yeah, I'm, I'm sure they can make it work. Uh, but also, like, Eli Roth, I guess, is the biggest um, wild if card here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause, um, Absolutely. I mean, he, he is, like, known for... I, I think I first knew him as the Bear Jew in Inglorious Bastards, right? Yeah, yeah. Donnie Donowich. Yeah. Um, and he was oh, really that, that movie good. Is so good, though. Sorry, that movie, Inglorious Bastards. Yeah, oh, that's so good. That is so good. I know, and just the scene with the bear Jew is so legendary. When when Brad Pitt yeah. is just like, like Johnny, this Nazi bastard want to die for his country. Oblige him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. so good, it's so good. Oh, there's so many good kind of actor performances i mean hans landa also yeah yeah I mean, oh, oh my god there's so many good scenes with him I, oh the strudel scene yeah are you kidding me That's every one of the best scenes i've ever seen i think i know and like and just oh, he brings so much threat to the room by yeah. just by just being present and just like the the, the fact that you know I, I saw in an interview that tarantino wanted to make his superpower multilingualism and it works yeah. it's such a superpower they really because he just like they, they just can't outsmart this guy with uh he, he knows like every freaking european language and he speaks it like almost perfectly yeah <laughs> like when they're masquerading as italians yeah. at the cinema <laughs> yeah, oh exactly. my god that's so painful to watch i know a re oh. <laughs> <Just> yeah <laughs> 
Yeah, what was that again? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, the strudel scene is and like the opening scene also oh, yeah. with uh, oh, Monsieur Le Petit. Yeah, yeah, yeah Monsieur Le Petit. Oh, it's insane. Like there's so many deta details in that scene that kind of contributes to his the foreboding kind of looming maliciousness. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know? You know, and you know oh. when when I first saw this movie though, like um, yeah. I, th I saw it when it came out, and I saw it with my dad, and we kind of expected um, kind of like a homage to like a darker kind of Kelly's heroes. Like it would focus more on like um, you know the bastards and them yeah, slaying yeah, Nazis yeah, undercover. Sure. We thought that, and we got this other th almost like thriller, um, right? And yeah, so I mean... a drama thriller, and we. I remember being disappointed with it then, but later on, as I started to appreciate acting more uh, mm -hmm. and Tarantino and like his genius uh, with the dialogue, the power of dialogue and all that. And I saw it again. I'm just like, holy shit, this movie just like, oh, yeah, there's some insane so performances. Hard. Yeah, absolutely. And just like you, I mean, I saw it. Uh, I guess I saw it like on my computer the first time and i was like yeah it's a good movie yeah. but i didn't really appreciate uh, like the deepness and uh, the small details in the scenes uh and then i reviewed like i watched it again much later and yeah i mean there are so many good scenes oh i can i mean the one in the bar also oh yeah uh, with uh fastbender with fastbender oh that's such a good scene and there's such uh, a, and then you have like the, um, you know the yeah with, with the with the actress and everything, and then like those uh, mm -hmm. Gestapo people, and and just like the, the, um, how they end up in like sort of a Mexican standoff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you yeah. have like uh, what what's the guy's name? Hugo Stiglitz, the guy who's like um, who just put the pillow over the the officer's head and just stabs them. Yeah, yeah, the, that guy. Yeah. Yeah, and and you, you know even when. He he just puts a gun to the guy's balls, right? And then yeah. as soon as the standoff goes off, he's just like, "Say, have we there sent your Nazi balls?" And then he, and then he shoots, his, <laughs> he shoots yeah, his dick he off. Yeah, he takes him off. He just takes him off. And, but then yeah, later, I mean... in the middle of the chaos, you just still see him like stab a guy with knives for some reason, and then he gets shot. And I'm just like, why? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just... yeah, yeah. It's a gunfight. I yeah. mean. <laughs> But that's his preferred method, you know. Yeah, yeah. Give the guy some. Give the guy some uh, room. It's a great scene. Great movie, man. Oh, if you haven't watched it, it's a like top highest humidus certified recommendation. Absolutely, absolutely hum humidified. <laughs> Hundred percent uh, humidified. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, we're talking about the Borderlands movie adaptation. So <laughs> yeah, Eli Roth. Roth. So <laughs> what, what's this? What's the uh, like as a director and as a movie maker, that's when it becomes a little bit more muddled. Yeah, because he's made a lot of schlock, like super violent uh, gore porn movies, mm -hmm. uh, Cabin mm -hmm. Fever and uh, Hostel One and Two comes to yeah. mind. I do remember Hostel though, like when it came out. Yeah, it was it was like the talk of the school or whatever. Basically, right. it was so slashy and violent and insane that yeah everybody was like oh my god hostile the, the, like, such a crazy movie <laughs> yeah and uh you remember that marketing trick they had which like which was part of why it became so massive because they just like capitalized on the gore 100 uh, percent, right but also the marketability and like the controversy because i remember in norway um it had an age rating of 20 yeah, that's, that was that's the right. thing, which is technically not even it, it wasn't real, right? Because as soon as you're 18, you no. can watch whatever the hell you want. But it was um, the marketing trick was like, yeah, recommended uh, viewing age is 20 plus. And we were like, whoa, yeah, because... 18 year old brains can't handle this kind of violence. Yeah, you know? this is like extra deranged, mm -hmm. <laughs> Just like corn made it himself, you know? Yeah, yeah, basically. 
uh, with a bit of help from Slanesh, of course. Oh, uh, yeah, the excess. In the, <laughs> yes. in the ad- indulgency department. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what, what do you but, actually yeah. think of the Hostel movies? It's not, it's not really the, the story that comes to mind when you, when you think of that movie, right? No, I think... I mean, I guess I was kind of shocked by... by the whole kind of... I don't know how it felt like something like this could, you know, exist. Yeah. You know, how how that kind of feels bad. Yeah. How that really grim depiction of how gruesome human beings can be right. to each other. The whole snuff that thing. Kinda, yeah, the whole snuff thing. And I remember, this is like a bit of, um, yeah, this is a bit sensitive, but I remember when I was a kid... Mm. I, uh, a crazy buddy of mine, which is, yeah, he, uh, he showed me, this was like the infancy of the internet, you know, but yeah, he yeah. had somehow gotten to download some basically snuff, you know, yeah, basically yeah. really like real killings and stuff Ugh. like that. Yeah. And I, he showed me like this one, one video and I remember like every detail of it. Uh, to this day because it was so scarring um and um yeah i guess that the it kind of reminded me a little bit of that that whole when you realize that human beings can actually be really really like evil yeah and you know and that that type of human being actually exists yeah uh because you you kind of assume that yeah everybody's got initial set of values and norms and yeah they can be corrupted from from that mm-hmm. point on but they still kind of they're they're good at they're good from the beginning you know but some <laughs> like this movie is kind of giving you that feel that no that's not true some people are just born with some kind of yeah, e- evil in them. <laughs> yeah, and there's always that, right? There's always the balance, and you know, human beings, sentient, and all that, capable of ultimate good and ultimate evil. So everything imaginable, mm-hmm. both positive and negative, is always possible. That's the yeah, but, yeah. And that's uh, you get some scary reminders of that sometimes. That's for uh, mm-hmm. that's for sure. Um, like I also remember, you know, seeing occasionally. Um, like, you know, videos being shown in class, for example. Uh, there was a, a, a couple of ones as well, but with, like, uh, I guess a classic back in the day was, like, Rotten.com. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but right. that was, I guess, pictures, but that was nasty. And I remember, like, you know how there was always this discussion about, yeah, you know, video game, violent video games and movies and stuff that makes um, people violent and makes it hard to differentiate. It never was for me, because as soon as you see the real thing, it's so, it's just a different beast. Yeah. It's it's, it's not, absolutely different. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely different. It's very nasty. Just like I think that different. yeah, yeah. Like you said, it's 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 been proven that video game violence and movie violence is easily distinguishable. Yeah, for ninety nine point nine nine percent of humans, you know, and uh, it's like when you see the real thing, you get sick you remember it like you never forget it yeah even even like a small movie clip uh and i remember after seeing that one snuff like clip that he showed me Mm -hmm. i i kind of remembered it for days i was and and i remember directly after when i got on my bike and (laughs) got home yeah i was actually a little bit sick right and I remember also that I reflected upon t- typically seeing like in American movies that people throw up after like someone had died uh, or some crazy stuff had had occurred, you know? Yeah. I always thought that, oh my God, that's so, that's so melodramatic, you know? <laughs> yeah. But actually, and, and then I remember the, that one time when I saw like, just like this, cl- this clip, mm-hmm. um, and uh yeah uh you can actually react a little bit like that and it's like a stark reminder that 
I don't know the background for for what that movie was, you know, but still it was like a horrible act. Yeah. Uh, basically. And yeah. Hope those guys uh, got the punishment they deserve. <laughs> I mean, this was very dark for <laughs> for a humanist podcast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cons- yeah. I mean, we usually have this funny twist on it with, uh, with like the warp and excess and all that kind of debauchery. But, you know, when it comes down to it, the real thing is just like so fucking deranged and despicable. It, it's just no, there's no condoning yeah. that. Just love each other, guys and gals and everyone. <laughs> just, just, I mean, give give the next uh, the next person some some slack. We 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 need an injection of positivity. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. But yeah, I think Eli Roth. I don't know. Uh, we'll just um, keep observing. Yeah, at <laughs> right least. And see. Yeah, at least at least he won't be afraid to bring the violence of borderlands so there's at least no that. you can expect to see the hopefully the crazy weapons really do the crazy damage that they should so that, that can be fun <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah, I mean, the, the weapons are gonna be like a character in in and of itself right yeah i yeah i hope so i that's like what they really need different to to leverage you know um so i hope so cautiously optimistic wish for the best yeah sure, for uh, sure. of course well, always do you want to do you have time to talk about like the 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 next uh, adaptation sure just go on all right on. so just quickly uh there was an it was announced that the anime and manga helsing is going to have a live action adaptation Ooh. by um someone who worked extensively on the john wick movies Oh, which gives it a little bit more hope in my eyes because Helsing is the kind of manga and anime where it's like so extremely anime style stylistic, right? And um, mm-hmm. it's like this one is also just it takes everything that's good about the exaggeration of um, of with anime and just brings it on the screen, right? Unashamedly, yeah. It, this is like. A, um, a super powerful vampire in the service of um, anti supernatural uh, organization, right? That battles mm-hmm. eventually undead Nazis with remnants <laughs> of the Third Reich coming in with zeppelins, yeah. dropping super powered vampire zombies onto London and makes it burn, right? So this yeah. one, uh, but at the same time, right? This, this can go so many ways i love the manga and helsing ultimate especially um Mm -hmm. i love it to death alucard the the main vampire uh this not castlevania alucard uh but helsing Mm -hmm. alucard right he's one of the my favorite anime characters of all time because he's just like he has so much badassery going for him Mm, yeah um so but then he, he also, the whole thing is about restraint and power fantasy, right? So he, he has, like, mm-hmm. in order to keep him in check, they have all these kind of um, seals on his power, like very anime, right? But then yeah. when, when he's, like, completely sealed, he he basically uses these <laughs> super hilariously oversized guns that have, like, <laughs> Vatican-blessed bullets and that are basically, <laughs> yeah. like, bolter shots, right? Like, small warheads and shit like that. Yeah. Uh, and then as soon as she releases, like, the, the Master Integra releases Alucard's seals, depending on the threat level, right? He just, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> his... He, he just, like, yeah, well, I don't need the guns anymore because now I can just, like, use my millions of slain foes to just, like... <laughs> conjure an army and just yeah it, it goes up there it's uh super yeah, exaggerated yeah. in all kinds of ways but it's tasteful and yeah. very stylish i think that that's kind of you know a hard thing to do that a lot of people have tried to bring that stylistic over the top action like that anime provides yeah to a live action adaptation it's really hard to do that you know that's uh to kind of super over emphasize everything you know the speed the the over the top violence the the impacts of hits and explosions and stuff like that 
Yeah. Um, and that's why I'm a bit worried because this one also emphasizes the stylisticness, right? And as mm -hmm. I've said a million times by now, but like just just the fact that um, when I saw the the dub of the anime, uh, this was yeah. I guess the first anime. I haven't seen the dub of Ultimate. There's two versions, right? Um, yeah. And the, immediately it was cringy. It it just didn't work. Mm. Yeah. For me, uh, in Japanese it works better. Um, <laughs> like we discussed before, this is uh, right. Japanese is important. The whole native language issue, right? And um, mm -hmm. the the guy that makes this, um, he is a writer for John Wick, right? Derek Kolstad is his name, yeah. and it's Amazon Studios producing it. So I'm guessing there's a sizable budget behind it, which is good. And he says he's gonna like Kolstad is gonna be a screenwriter and producer. Um, and, um, you know, the good thing is that there's a lot of stylistic fighting, which also John Wick, uh, did very, very well. So that gives me yeah. hope. Yeah. And also, I mean, there's just so many outrageous characters in, in that show. Like, for example, you have Walter, the butler that has like these piano strings that are yeah. invisible that he can just like completely mincemeat a whole room with like a hundred people right <laughs> mm -hmm. so, so and then you have like um the the recruit the newbie vampire lady that has like uh the harkonnen guns that are specially made for her that are essentially like what 20 millimeter anti-air guns from the world from world war one or two remade into <laughs> like vampire carryable rifles <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's this level of uh, yeah. exaggerated, like, and I, I love it in the anime, but they, the anime also has that sort of like, it's not afraid, it's very self-aware too. So while yeah, it's badass yeah. on one hand, it can also make fun of itself in others, right? Um, and that's what this movie needs to do as well. It cannot be over serious. It cannot try to be just too cool for school. It needs to have... It needs to have like self-aware humor as well, or it's not gonna work. It's just gonna be cringe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's hard to kind of balance that, you know. But yeah. I guess John Wick was like very good at at that stylistic violence. So yeah, and it had a little bit of humor in it, right? Like from time to time, yeah. um, a little bit of self-awareness as well. So I, that that does give me hope, and the fact that he the Colstad said that. He really loved the manga and he grew up with it to a certain extent. Um, so he's a fan of the original material and knows it mm. pretty well. That also helps. Yeah, that's good. And uh, the helps. yeah, so like, uh, and just who the hell do you cast as Alucard? I cannot. Ooh, that's hard. Yeah, that's really hard because you need to be, you need to have that like insanely, um, how to say that that like self-aware all-knowing like all-powerful immortal but also like very sexual right he's also very like that kind of like super suave but also he has so many like it's gonna be hard to bring him to the big screen well mm. yeah definitely I, I have no idea who can play him honestly um walter could probably be someone like oscar isaacs maybe the guy who played alfred in in batfleck um yeah I, I could definitely see someone like him <laughs> having the piano strings and having that like sadistic <laughs> smile and stuff, you know. Maybe yeah, Charlize yeah, Theron sure. could be Integra. Um, Chloe Grace Moretz could be Sarah's. I mean, th there are good choices for them. Yeah. But Alucard is like, you need Ooh, to get yeah. the right guy there. And don't just cast freaking Josh Brolin or someone like, you know, just like someone that's overused. No. No, yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I mean, you've got to have that both, uh, I guess, the ultimate, like, um, confident character, you know, yeah. with, like, uh, I don't know, a thousand year of experience. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, like, basically knowing that y y when fully released, you're a god. Essentially, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and kind of how do you humanize something like that the answer is you don't you're not a human yeah and you that's very hard to play you know for any actor yeah the and you like 
he had a little bit of that in the anime when he trains Seras. Like he he mm-hmm. he shows a little bit of like master student affection towards her. But then as mm-hmm. soon as battle starts and he enjoys himself and he gets the seals taken off, right? He just like becomes this like this this monster, like this warp fiend that just devours people. Um yeah. <laughs> He's very warp like. Yeah, he, <laughs> when, he, when he's released. He is. He's like um an enslaved demon uh, from the warp and it's um and he he just like he always wishes for death because he he just feels like he's kind of like one punch man in the way that he he wants like a, a worthy fight, right? Someone who can actually yeah. threaten his life. And then you have um someone like fucking Father Alec Alexander Anderson. <laughs> The, the super, the, the Vatican's super bayonet wielding exorcist guy from yeah. like the Judas Iscariot hidden chapter of the Vatican. <laughs> Just like it's so like. <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh, that's so, that's so anime. Yeah, it, it really uh. is. And he just goes around there like having all these, um, these holy scripture pages that he uses to seal people and he has bayonets that. He just has an infinite amount of bayonets that he throws at people. <laughs> <Just> like... <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be hard to adapt that. But I think that this series is also like a good kind of size for an adaption. Sure. Right? Sure. And they can do some. You can, yeah, it's uh, they can fit that into a movie for sure. At least mm, good yeah. parts of it. Yeah. Yeah, like good good scenes and, and like meaningful meaningful development of the characters and stuff yeah um but yeah it's uh it's gonna be hard with alucard yeah i i hope it succeeds i'm gonna be watching very closely uh on the development of this and uh but i mean in the meantime read the manga or watch helsing ultimate it's a super violent and super entertaining watch yeah and with that good people remember to stay humid and stay dank